So I've been meal prepping for the last decade, and at this point, I have certainly put in the 10,000 hours required to become a master meal prepper, which I know sounds ridiculous, but that's what I do. That's what I love doing. Getting in the kitchen, preparing food from scratch so I can eat well throughout the week. And in my past meal prep videos, I focused more on prepping for a few days or an entire week, but today is gonna be a little bit different because I'm honing in on a single day and we're breaking down my master meal plan for one day of eating from the moment I wake up in the morning the whole morning ritual and all of that to the very last snack that caps it off at night we are getting serious with my master meal plan today when it comes to my master meal plan for the day, I'm not gonna be getting into any specific diets or anything like that. For me, what's important is that everything's made from scratch, everything's delicious, everything makes you feel good and keeps you energized throughout the day. And lastly, I'll be focusing on balance, making sure that what I eat in a day is balanced nutritionally, it's diverse in flavors, it's diverse in ingredients and all of that good stuff. And the first thing I like to start my day off with, which is so cliche, for a day in the life type video, but it's true. I start off with a lemon water. At least when I start off with a lemon water, I feel much better throughout the day. Actually, this isn't a lemon water. This is a citrus water because I'm using different types of citrus, whatever I have around. In this case, I had the full trio, grapefruit, lemon, and orange for the win. So I'll just slice a wedge or two off of the citrus, store the rest for later. You'll definitely see that citrus come in handy in other recipes today. And I'll just squeeze that in the bottom of a glass, put some ice over it, fill it up with water. I mean, you know how to make a flavored citrus water. It's pretty obvious. The truth is you do lose a lot of water when you sleep. So before I start filling my body up with caffeine, which is naturally more dehydrating, if I can get a citrus water in my system. I don't know the exact science. There are plenty of health benefits for starting your day off with something like this, but I just know I feel better. My system seems to just run better throughout the day. Now, once I'm hydrated, well, then I can get the caffeine in my system to start the day. And everyone, of course, has their own morning ritual, their own drink of choice. For me, I have an interesting relationship with caffeine. Sometimes I'm hard on caffeine, sometimes I'm hard off. I switch up the type of caffeine week to week. Some weeks I'm hitting that espresso machine hard and I'm whipping up cappuccinos and Americanos. Some weeks I'm just drinking straight tea. I like to have a well-stocked tea drawer at all times. But one of my favorite caffeine sources, especially the last, I would say two years, is macho, which are green tea leaves that are ground up into a powder. So when you drink the actual tea, Tea, you're consuming the entire leaf. And for me, it just seems like matcha is a very clean caffeine source. I'm not just getting a boost from the caffeine, but I also get a hit of energy from consuming the entire tea leaf and all of the goodness that comes along with that. Now, making your own matcha at home is definitely a process, but that's what I like about it. That's what makes it a morning ritual. It gives me something to do. A nice little act of meditation. And I generally use about one teaspoon per cup, and I'll sift that into my matcha bowl so it's nice and and smooth. And then I'll heat up some water to around 165 degrees, which is very important. You don't want to overcook your green tea or it will get bitter on you quickly. And once it's at temp, I'll pour it into my matcha bowl and start whisking. You want to incorporate some air into this matcha so it frosts up just like this. Now in the winter time, I'm drinking more warm matcha, of course, but I would say overall, I do prefer the way matcha tastes when it's iced. So I'll fill up a cup to the top pretty much with ice because warm matcha is gonna melt a good bit of the ice. Pour that over and then finally just hit it with your milk of choice, whatever you prefer. Now, when we're thinking about breakfast, I don't necessarily believe in this notion that it's the most important meal of the day. I think all of your meals are equally important, but it is crucial to get off to a good start. Now, if I'm gonna eat a really heavy breakfast like the eggs and the toast and all of that, I'll probably push that off more to a brunch later in the day. I don't like loading my system up super early in the morning. So if I want a nice, delicious, energy-boosting breakfast right in the morning, I'll do some type of homemade baked goods. I pretty much just freestyle 
freestyle a new recipe every few days with what I have in my pantry. But if I don't have time to bake from scratch, I will make these things right here. And yes, these might look like traditional pancakes, but they're not. They only have a few ingredients and those ingredients will not weigh you down at all. So to make these pancakes, you just have to remember equal part banana to egg. So for this recipe, I'm going with two bananas that I'm gonna mash up until they're nice and masticated and broken down. And then I'll crack in two eggs and whisk that up until it's smooth. Now to give these pancakes some structure, I'll add some type of flour product. Generally staying away from gluten because I'll probably be eating carbs later on in the day. So in this case, I added around a quarter cup of coconut flour and a quarter cup of chickpea flour. That's what I had in my pantry, but use whatever you want. And then just a teaspoon of baking powder to fluff them up a little bit and a little bit of salt to bring out those flavors. Now, once that's whisked together, get a pan on a medium heat. And I like using coconut oil to fry these pancakes. It gives them a really nice flavor. And I'll scoop out a few pancakes. And when the bottom forms that nice golden brown crust, just flip them over, fry them for another minute or two on the other side, and you're good to go. So obviously today is all about my master meal plan. And if I could cook like this every day, well, I would. But cooking is a lot like life. Some days you're flowing in the kitchen and other days, well, we all know what that looks like. How we actually feel moment to moment and day to day, that's pretty much out of our control. But how we show up and deal with those feelings, that's something that we can actually get better at through practice and through guidance, which is why I'm a big supporter of today's video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online portal that provides direct to consumer access to mental health services. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. So BetterHelp will access your specific needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can log on to your account anytime and send a message to your counselor and you will get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly and video phone sessions so you'll never have to sit in a waiting room again. I feel like as human beings, most of us are just stuck in our own heads and it really holds us back from living authentically and living our best lives. And the easiest way to break free of that is talking to someone else, a licensed professional that has the skills to break you free of that so you can start living a better life. So if you're feeling stuck and you think you need a little bit of guidance or support, BetterHelp might be a great option for you. So check out the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash prohomecooks. That's better H-E-L-P for 10% off your first month. So obviously my lunch options will change from day to day depending on what I have in the fridge, what leftovers I have from the night before, how much time I have to cook. But this thing right here, the all-purpose salad has been my go-to over the last few years. Basically, this is all of my cravings in one bowl in a form that won't take me down. Something light enough that I can eat in the middle of the day and still have energy to continue on working because for lunchtime, you don't wanna be taken down. I've made that mistake way too many times where I eat a heavy lunch and then I'm just done and unproductive throughout the day. And usually around lunchtime, I'm craving some type of protein, not always, but that's generally what my body wants. So I'll just use what I have. It could be a piece of fish, it could be some crispy toast, tofu or chicken. In this case, I had some leftover short rib from my last barbecue video, which fries up so well and gives me a lot of excess fat, which I'm gonna need in a second. So I'll just cut that into some cubes. I'll get that in a pan rendering on a medium heat until that oil has released and those short rib chunks are now super crispy, a perfect addition to a salad. Then to take advantage of that rendered beef fat, in this case, I had some sourdough that I just cut into small pieces and I'll cook those on the same heat, add a little bit of salt and pepper, get them perfectly brown and crispy and you have the most delicious crouton you could ever imagine. Now, obviously the salad dressing is completely up to you. I have an entire video, which I'll link below on how to craft a great salad dressing with your pantry items. But for this salad, I'm throwing together a quick honey Dijon dressing that I have been loving recently. And all you need to do is add equal parts mustard and honey to a bowl. I juiced half of a lemon. I'll add in a scoop of mayo, which is optional, but it adds a nice added creaminess. And finally, I emulsified in some olive oil until it was nice and creamy and boom, you've got 
got a really simple, delicious salad dressing. Now to bring this salad together, I've got some baby gem lettuce. The small leaves I'll throw right in the bowl. The bigger leaves, I'll slice those up. I used the peeler to make some carrot ribbons, sliced up some radish, some cherry tomatoes, and sliced open an avocado, peeled that, diced that into chunks, threw that in the salad. And then finally the crispy short rib and those croutons, added in that honey Dijon dressing, tossed to perfection. And there you go, that is my ideal lunch right there. It doesn't get much better hitting all of those food groups, all of those cravings, but still nice and light. Now, I personally grew up a big time snacker. There was just endless snacks in my house. I was the house where the kids came over and just raided the pantry. It was like a free for all of just insanity. And the snacking side of me really has never gone away, but the types of snacks I consume, yes, they have changed. They've gotten much healthier and of course, much more homemade. And my favorite snack of them all is this thing right here. Good old energy ball, because there's there's two sectors of snacking. There's the salty and the sweet. And generally after lunch, I'm craving at least one of them, quite possibly both. But I wanna do it in a healthy way, of course. So I'm not just grabbing a bag of potato chips. And this thing right here, well, it covers both salty and sweet, and it's so easy to make. One thing you're definitely gonna need is some type of food processor. I'm using a full size here, but you can use a mini one as well. I'm gonna start with around seven to 10 pitted dates, which is your main sweetness for the snack, but it's also the glue that holds everything together. Then I'll use whatever nuts I have in the pantry. For this recipe, I've got half a cup of almonds, half a cup of cashews, and a really nice fatty element is coconut. So I'm going in with half a cup of coconut flour you can use shredded coconut as well, and an eighth of a cup of chia seeds. Now my secret ingredient is some citrus. You can use any type of citrus for this. I'm gonna use orange, which is my favorite, and I'm gonna first zest the orange, which will really enhance the flavor, give it a nice orange aroma, and then I'll start grinding up all of those ingredients. So right here is the perfect ground level of your ingredients, but you can see they're not sticking together. So what I'm gonna do is take a wedge of that same orange. You can use any citrus, grapefruit, lemon, and this juice, this liquid is gonna really help bring these balls together. If you get some pulp in there, that's totally fine. And just like that, a little bit of orange juice, and now we can form a beautiful ball. Well, they'll be prettier than that. Now everybody knows about the old late afternoon crash. Unless you're some type of superhuman, generally around three to 4 p.m. you're working, or at least you're trying to work, and energy levels start to dip. No matter what you're eating, I mean a light lunch like a salad, that can help, but still around that time from working all day, from raising a baby, my energy levels will dip, but I have a solution, and it's this right here, this magical elixir of life, kombucha. This one right here is a peach and ginger kombucha that I made last week. And I like to have kombucha on tap. You guys know I'm a big fan. I've put out many videos on it. And I used to drink kombucha thinking I was getting a pick me up from the caffeine that you brew it with. But the truth is the energy kick you're getting is actually from the B vitamins. And I don't know what B vitamins are to be honest, but I do know that people take B vitamins to increase their energy. So for me, when I'm feeling that late afternoon energy dip and I still have some work to do and I just gotta get through a few hours, a little B vitamin kombucha pick me up straight to the brain. I'm telling you, every time I'm feeling it right now, ready to get some work done. <laughs> So when it comes to dinner for me, a lot of times it's just throwing things together in like 15 minutes with what I have in the fridge or pantry. But if we're talking about master meal plan, it is nice to take into account what you've eaten that day. So for lunch, my other big meal, I ate a lot of raw ingredients in that salad. I also had meat with that short rib. So for dinner, I'm going to balance it out with something nice and warm, something vegetarian. And what I have right here is a coconut curry. One of my go-to, you know, if I have five like essential dinners, 
boom, right here, it can come together very quickly, even with a homemade curry paste. So I'm gonna start off with a homemade curry paste. You can do this in a food processor, but if you have a mortar and pestle, well, whip it out. Start mashing up ingredients. I'm gonna start with some spices. I have coriander seeds, some cumin seeds, and some cardamom pods. I'll give those a rough grind, and then I'll go in with my aromatics. This is a really basic curry paste with the stuff I had on hand, so I'm just using a few cloves of garlic, some slices of ginger, and the white ends of my green onion. I'll throw that in and start mashing that up as well. And it's not about getting it perfect. If you have an hour, then you can pound it completely smooth like a traditional curry paste, but even a rough paste will give you incredible flavor. Now, once you have that rough paste, I'm just gonna add two more ingredients, a little bit of turmeric powder, if you have the fresh stuff, go for it, and some salt to round off this curry paste. Boom, you're done. That took like three or four minutes. Now I'll get a pan on the burner on a medium high heat and I'll throw in some oil and I'm gonna fry up some tofu. Again, this is a vegetarian dish, but I still want some substance with this dinner, not just veggies. So I'll fry up that tofu on both sides until it's nice and crispy. I'll remove that, then I'll throw in that curry paste and start frying that curry paste. This is the step most people miss when it comes to curry. If you really wanna bring out the flavors of the aromatics, give it a little fry and some oil. About two minutes in, I'll hit it with some coconut milk, but I'll continue to fry it in the coconut milk because the coconut milk is just mostly fat. So when it reduces a bit, you're just frying in fat. And then once that's cooked and smelling incredible, I'll dump some more coconut milk in there to thin it out and make it into a nice curry broth. And then I'll throw in some additional veggies. I've got some mushrooms, I've got some asparagus, and finally that crispy tofu. And I'll cook that for about five minutes until those veggies soften and that curry really starts to thicken up. The beautiful thing about this meal right here is it actually didn't take that long to make. And let me tell you, master meal plan, yes please. I would take a coconut curry, not every night of the week, I'd get sick of it pretty quickly, but every few nights I would definitely eat something like that. Perfect dinner for the master meal plan. Now, again, I like snacks. So after dinner, the sweet, the salty, I just need it. So generally like a piece of chocolate or two in any form, I kind of need at least one taste of chocolate before the day's done. I think it's probably an addiction. So even just a few chocolate chips, but a great salty homemade snack that I make all the time is just some homemade popcorn, fresh popped. So I'll get a saucepan out, add some oil, put that on a high heat, add your kernels in, let them heat up and start to pop. I mean, do I really have to explain how to make popcorn? Pretty damn simple. Now, a lot of times I'll use this spice mix that I love that uses nutritional yeast. It gives it a really cheesy flavor, but I don't have that in the studio. So just a little bit of salt. And now you can Netflix and chill the right way. All right, I couldn't fit it all in for the thumbnail, but we've got the cleanser. We've got the morning ritual the caffeine, breakfast, lunch, sweet and salty snack, kombucha energy booster, coconut curry dinner, and just a little popcorn treat to wrap it all up. Now, this obviously is my master meal plan. I would say I eat like this maybe 10% of the time. And of course, when I'm eating all this homemade food, I feel great, but it's not the point to get it perfect every time. The key is just to show up, even if you're making one or two of these things a day. Being a prom cook is all about showing up in the kitchen, getting creative with what you have, and providing for yourself and the people around you. So hopefully you took some inspiration from this video and I will see you soon.